If you have one leg that's longer than the other, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do about it. My name is Dr. Story. I've been a chiropractor for over 23 years. I'm going to give you realistic advice based on my experience. Now, if one leg grew longer than the other, there's a number of reasons this can occur uh, through our growth plates, but it's a very common problem is that a patient will actually have either the femur or the tibia actually longer than the other one on the other side. And so what ends up happening is they have a situation where one pelvis is higher than the other. Very often patients will actually notice that when they buy clothing that one side is longer than the other or they'll notice one shoe is wearing out farther or just when they wear a bathing suit or they just look in the mirror that their, their body is just tilted. So what do you do? Well, the first thing that you want to do is get an accurate reading. Number one, you want to be assessed by someone who looks at the body fully. So sometimes people have a shorter leg, but it's actually a dropped arch. So what I'm going to show you in this video does not apply to that. So what we would do in that case, though, is to give them custom-made orthotics and with correcting for both arches so it brings the, the small arch up, correcting the short leg. But we're talking about an anatomical short leg. We're talking about one tibia is actually longer than the other, or one femur is longer than the other, and there's no pelvic uh, dysfunction, joint dysfunctions. So what you gotta do first is you gotta have an x-ray, and, and it's a special x-ray to actually measure to the millimeter the difference of the um, leg bones. So once you have that information, let's say it's three millimeters, five millimeters, that type of thing, anything below about three millimeters generally doesn't cause problems, but anything above three millimeters very often can, especially if you're on your feet a lot. So the best thing to do would be to buy these things, and I'm going to put a link down below um, of how to get these. They're very, very cheap, a couple bucks at most, but what happens is you can see that there's, it's a wedge and it's about three, this is a three millimeter one. It's three millimeters here and it's basically nothing right here. And this you would put on the inside of your shoe. You don't glue these to your shoe, you put them on the inside of your shoe. Usually for most people that have, that wear a shoe, you'll take out the little insert part, put it underneath and put it down and that usually keeps it in place. If not, what you can use, you can use some uh, what's called museum wax and actually put it in there. You don't have to glue it in. You just put that little wax in there and it keeps it from sliding in your shoe. What happens is this actually will raise the actual heel upwards by about three millimeters, taking, taking that slack out for that short leg. Now, if someone has, let's say, a six millimeter, nine millimeter, that type of thing, uh, shoe lift, you can either double up on these or you can buy separate ones. So they actually have, depending on, you know, just go to Amazon and figure it out. But what happens here is I will put two of them in and that corrects for about six millimeters right there. So this often will help people tremendously with back pain and particularly hip pain. Very often patients will actually have hip pain on the opposite side of the short leg, which is interesting. It makes sense, I'm gonna explain it right now, but it'll make sense uh, why it's the long leg. So when a person is tilted, if I'm gonna stand back here and I'm tilted up, this is the side where all the tendons and the muscles get their strain. So very often patients will have pain on, let's say, the right side. When we examine them, it's the left side that's shorter, and we actually put these in, and it just, almost by magic, they feel so much better. Now, how high can you go before this becomes a problem? My personal experience has been somewhere in the neighborhood of seven, eight, nine millimeters. It starts to become a little obstructive inside the shoe to where it lifts your foot out of the shoe and it doesn't feel as comfortable anymore. In that particular case, what I recommend is to take your shoe to a shoemaker and let's say you, have, you need a 10 millimeter lift. What they would do is they would take your shoe and glue a piece of plastic that matches your shoe so hardly anybody can see it, and we'll put it through the full length of the shoe. And this is something that uh, is extremely necessary if you have a major uh, leg length discrepancy. So that is how, as a chiropractor, I help people with anatomically short legs.